Thank you all for joining us. Thank you for being here. I feel a little out of sort. Last couple times we've talked, it's been over uh, big plates of Italian food in Providence. Yeah. So I feel like I should have brought some eggplant you parmesan. Should have, or at or least a bottle of red wine. I'm yeah, I'm really sorry. Frank. I'm sorry about that. But <laughs> so we're not going to talk about food. We're going to talk about the Rhode Island Promise. You um, have come up with a free tuition proposal for Rhode Island that you're now trying to put through the legislature. For people who aren't totally up to speed on that, can you give us the short version of what that proposal is and how it differs in key ways from, say, what Bernie Sanders was proposing and what Governor Andrew Cuomo has proposed? Uh, yes, I'm happy to. And it's wonderful to be here with you and great to be with you, Frank. So the proposal is called Rhode Island Promise. I proposed it this year. It is a last dollar scholarship to provide two years of tuition-free college uh, for every Rhode Island high school graduate uh, at one of our uh, institutions of public higher ed. So in Rhode Island, um, New Yorkers here will find this hard to believe, we have one community college, one, <laughs> you're already laughing, one, we have one <laughs> community college called the Community College of Rhode Island. We have our land-grant research university, URI, and then we have a four-year degree-granting institution, RIC, Rhode Island College. So what we've said is, uh, if you go to, if you're eligible for in-state tuition, if you're a Rhode Island resident, you apply for all your financial aid and receive what you're eligible for. Uh, you have to go full-time. We'll either pick up your two-year associate's degree at the community college or the last two years of a four-year degree. Mm -hmm. And that's a little bit of a twist. Uh, it's an idea, in fact, that came from our college presidents because they said, look, we, plenty of students start, the problem isn't starting, it's finishing. Right. So provide, or as my kids say, they can get the chocolate after they eat the broccoli and chicken. So the, the second two years are on us, you gotta get yourself through the first two years. As I understand the New York program, some of the key differences, obviously it's two years, not four. Uh, it's that second two years. Um, Probably the biggest difference is the proposal as I've presented is not means tested. Right. And, you know, we can argue about that. We can talk about that. Well, why did you decide to go down right. that fork in the road? So uh, I feel this is, um, it's like a public education. When I was a kid, and when you were a kid, not that long ago. Oh, well, long ago. No, not that long ago. There was, I, there was no full day kindergarten. It really didn't exist. There was no full day K. There was no public pre-K. Now we know that that is part of an essential education, and we provide that. I feel the same way is 99% of good jobs that are being created, that have been created in this country since the recession, require a degree past high school. And so how can you say, in order to get a good job, you need a degree past high school, but oh, by the way, it's unaffordable. So I, I think those two years ought to be, as a matter of right, part of our public education promise um, to every kid in Rhode Island. The, the other difference between our program and what I know about Excelsior is we don't require a um, residency requirement post-graduation. Yes, and New York does, yeah. And New York does. Yeah. Why did we do that? As I said before, I think this is an essential education to get a job. The other reason is having run a government for two and a half years now, it's really hard to execute well. And so I wanted the simplest, easiest to administer, easiest to implement program so we got it right. And, and the way we're proposing this, the colleges provide the scholarship and we don't have to be tracking people down to, and spending money on a bureaucracy to track people down to figure out if they are gonna stay in Rhode Island. Just to push back for a second though. Yes. It means that if tomorrow's Donald Trump and I ask the question this way because there's a new law in America, you can't let 10 minutes go by without saying Donald Trump's name. <laughs> if tomorrow's Donald Trump raised tomorrow's Ivanka in Rhode Island, she would be able to go to college there two years for free, even with all that money, is that right? Yes, in the same way that she could go to any one of our public high schools. And by the way, it wouldn't be the worst thing if we had more, not, I'm not wading into the Trump situation. I'm just saying. I was say the worst, it wouldn't be the worst no, that many more Donald Trumps in the future. <laughs> Point of it is. I thought you were a Democrat. You, want, no, you said we weren't going to be political. Uh, no, sorry. See, now you're violating the rules. Point being, it is a good thing. You know, I sent my kids to public school. It is a good thing to have 
all kinds of people of all kinds of economic spectrums at our public institutions. Uh, and so, yes. Now, I don't, th let me t also tell you the reality, because I ran the numbers on this. We thought about means testing it, and if, you know, the legislature may require that in order to get it passed, because there's a bu it's budgetary reality, and I'm practical, and I appreciate that. There are actually very, very, very few students who come from upper income who go to one of our institutions of public education. So you have to realize that. Here's the reality. Let's say your mom's a school teacher and your dad is a firefighter or a, you have a double nurse family. You are solidly making six figures. Let's say you together make $125,000 a year. That is middle class, that is not poor. And let's say you have two or three kids. College is out of reach and those kids need and deserve an education to get a good job. So that's the other reason I didn't want to means test it. I didn't want to leave behind the average Rhode Island family. You got some titters in the audience when you mentioned that you have all of three public colleges and universities yeah. in Rhode Island. Is this plan upsizable to a state with a much larger population and dozens of public institutions? I think so. You know, look, every state has their own challenges and, uh, you know, may require slightly different programs. The other thing about Rhode Island is you can pretty much get anywhere in 45 minutes. So we're not covering room and board. And the reality is you can commute right. um, anywhere. So I think the concept of breaking down the barriers so folks can get the education and job training that they need to get a good job through a scholarship program is a concept that any state could apply and then you know, changing it to fit, like in Tennessee, for example, they have a big network of community colleges and technical colleges. We don't, so they limited their program to those community colleges. I think that, you know, that could make sense considering Tennessee. I understand as you were putting this together um, and figuring out how you were gonna talk about it, you really struggled with the word free. Yes, Why? I did. I did struggle with the word free, and I was ultimately convinced to go for that because you know, to capture people's attention. Well, why, a couple why reasons. Want, why were you worried right, about Right, a couple reasons. One, it isn't really free. I mean, the reality is, if you want a four-year degree, we're only paying the tuition portion for two years. There's books, there's fees, there's living expenses. Most students will still have to work. Um, so it isn't actually free. Uh, and, I mean, I think that's sort of the main reason. You know, it's, I didn't want to be you know, misleading about the program. Um, but, it, and also you have to apply for all your financial aid and your Pell Grant and whatnot. So, but, uh, so that's why I was apprehensive. You mentioned Pell Grants. Pell Grants you can take with you to a public or private institution. Yeah. As you put this together, was there much discussion about whether you should come up with something that would also provide money for those students who wanted to go to a private institution? Uh, we had a little bit of discussion. Um, in general, I tend away from voucher programs, which is what that would be. Uh, here's the reality. This program, as I've proposed it, is a very small expenditure on behalf of Rhode Island. It's like less than 1% of our total budget. We're still in a budget deficit. You know, I'm, my question as governor is, how can I sp spend a little and get a big impact? And this way, you can get, I think, a big impact. The graduation rate at Rhode Island College and CCRI and URI, I believe, will go, will rise substantially and we'll be able to have the biggest impact on our students. It's also supportive of public education, you know, taxpayer dollars to go to support our public institutions. If we had provided a voucher program, each student would have gotten a much smaller scholarship, and would have had a more diffuse impact for the same amount of money. Should private institutions feel threatened by this kind of plan? And if not, why shouldn't they feel threatened by it? Uh, I don't think they should, uh, though I've heard from a few that don't love it. Uh, and what do they say to you? We, so we're blessed in Rhode Island with, you know, we have Brown and RISD and Providence College and Johnston and Wales, you know, we have Salve Regina and they're all terrific and we're lucky to have them. Uh, most of the students who go to those places are from out of state. You know, what they say to us is it's gonna take students away from us. Um, and my response to that is a fewfold. I, we have to act. 
So the answer is we don't know precisely how this will affect private institutions at scale long term if this were to happen in 50 states. Uh, and we will you know, deal with that as we go. You can't use that as an excuse not to act. Too many students are being denied an opportunity to get a good job because they can't afford college. It's a crisis in this country. It's sh locking people out of economic opportunity and we have to take action. I do will say that if over time this puts pressure on private institutions to bring down the cost or to be more innovative, to figure out ways to provide a more affordable college education, um, that would be a wonderful societal benefit, I think. Do you worry at all, because I've heard this concern expressed too, that it will increase applications to the public school so greatly, they'll become more selected than you necessarily want them to be, and they in fact will no longer be open to some of the students you're actually trying to help? Yeah. So again, I think if you look at places like Tennessee that have been doing this for a couple of years, that isn't the experience. Um, I think more like, you will probably see a bump, and I think when we modeled for the budgetary numbers, I, I think we considered a bump of about 20%, just to make sure we were funding it adequately. Um, I think m more likely, you're just gonna see more, kid, more people finishing. You know how many people I see, Frank, on a weekly basis who, say, who are waitressing? And why are they waitressing when they want to be a nurse? Because they dropped out of Rhode Island College. They have a bundle of loans, no degree, and they're waitressing and they want to be a nurse. They deserve to get the job they want, to be making a decent income. Um, I was with a woman the other day. She works two minimum wage jobs as a CNA. She said, Governor, you've got to get this passed. She works 60 hours a week. She is poor. She has half of a degree, and she has a lot of loans. So more likely, you're going to see these people picking up their degree, getting a better job, and not be burdened with debt, which is good for them and good for the economy. As I was looking around at the reactions to what you proposed, one of the ones that surprised me, one of the criticisms that surprised me, was people saying this actually, it's a lot of money to benefit only a small portion of the population. I think they meant not only that not everybody goes to college, but anyone over a certain age who's yeah. past college. Um, how do you respond to that and how, whether it's education or whether it's something else as a governor, how do you get people to care about things that might be for the public good that aren't going to actually help them individually in the immediate future? It's, I've been surprised by that reaction, though it's been very common. You know, I had to pay for my kids or myself. So it's a challenge. Here's what I'd say about that. This is about jobs. Why am I doing this? Because I've spent two years as governor talking to companies saying, what's it going to take for you to add jobs in Rhode Island? What would it take you for you to move to Rhode Island? And the top answer is skilled workforce. So this is about making sure Rhode Islanders get the jobs we're creating. And every Rhode Islander has the job training and education they need to get a good job. And if we do that, then the economy is going to be better for everybody and everybody wins. And if we don't do that, then our economy won't be strong and everybody loses. So I think it's the right thing to do. But if you don't agree with me, the fact of the matter is this is all about economic growth, economic development. The states that are going to be successful are the ones that have a talent supply. And then, then the pie grows for everybody. I mean, your piece of the pie grows. You know, it's a, this is about long-term economic development that benefits everyone. Are we, in terms of our political obsessions of the moment. Are we talking so much about, uh, you know, getting in, about making college accessible, getting completion rates up, that we're forgetting to talk about getting kids to college in shape to actually do the work? I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of college administrators and presidents in this room who worry about the quality of the people who are walking onto campus. Um, is it, are, are we taking our eye off the ball there? We can't, but we have to do both. You know, we have to, chew gum and walk at the same time. Uh, <laughs> so in Rhode Island, we, I'm happy to say, we have a good tradition of investing in K through 12. We are top 10 in the country in what we invest in our K through 12 system. Doesn't mean the results are where they need to be and we have to not take our eye off the ball. Unfortunately, we're closer to the bottom uh, what we invest in our institutions of public higher ed. So that's another reason I'm, I'm for this. This is about supporting public higher education. 
Um, it's not the only thing we're doing. You know, we are improving remedial education at our community college. We are, uh, you know, improving our, the way we teach in high schools. So not to go into all the details, you have to do both. Um, but I don't think we have the luxury of saying, well, we're just going to work on K through 12 until that's perfect, and then we're going to focus on higher ed. Because the economy is changing too fast. This is about making sure our young people are ready for jobs and ready for the jobs of the future and the economy of the future. I mean, look at We know people are worried about their economic stability. There's a good reason for that. That's not irrational. If you don't have some degree past high school, your economic prospects aren't very good. And so I think we got to face that reality and help folks get the skills they need to get jobs. Because it's part of this larger national debate, your free tuition proposal has gotten the lion's share of media attention. You've done some other things in Rhode Island, though, that I find very interesting that I wish you'd talk about in terms of um, kids beginning college already with part of the work done. Can you talk about um, what you've done in that regard? Yes. Uh, so I started a program my first year as governor called uh, Prepare RI where we allow every high school student to take college classes for college credit for free. And this, I think- At a public institution. At a public yeah, high yeah. school, I'm sorry, at public high schools. But so prior to w when I became governor, you could take college classes for college credit, but it was about $200 a class. Now that may not sound like that much- That's a lot. To you, but $200 might as well be $20,000 for a lot of kids in our public high schools. So we said, you know what, let's break down the barriers. Not 200 bucks, it's free. The number of students taking the college classes for college credit through the roof. Small investment, huge impact. We have thousands and thousands of students getting a year of college under their belt in high school. So the Rhode Island Promise program is just kind of a natural next extension. And you could imagine, Maybe you take a year of college courses in high school, then you go to URI and you can get a college degree in three years and we'll pay for two. It just unlocks huge opportunities for people. Is there, is there good research on whether that would, do we know that that would boost completion rates? We do know that the most common reason people drop out is affordability. And we do know when you, reduce that barrier, people are much more likely to graduate. We do know that. You've also done something with college boards and assistance there, right? You're talking about that? Yeah, so we've made it um, free for, this was the first year, we, every kid in high school, I don't know if this made me popular with teenagers, but every kid in high school um, had the SAT administered to them for free during class time. Why did we do that? Not everyone can afford the money to take the test. Not everyone would even think about taking the test. No one in their family ever did that before. Not everyone could get a ride on a Saturday to go to the school to take the test. So reducing the barriers, same thing, phenomenal results. Um, as I spend time with people in Rhode Island, it's constantly moving to me and amazing to me how many people there are who are unbelievably talented, smart, hardworking. They just want a chance. Like, you, someone gave you a chance. Someone gave me a chance. My dad went to college on a GI Bill. Changed my, all his brothers were butchers. One guy, he got his ticket to the middle class. So many high school kids, they just like, just give me a chance. And for them, that chance, the difference between a life of poverty and a life of opportunity could be a thousand bucks, two thousand bucks. And I think it's worth making the investment. The SAT, the free SAT, that seems like such a restrained and reasonable investment. Are other states doing that? Uh, I think some are, but I'm not sure how many. But not a majority at all? No, no, not a majority at all. And again, when you're governor of a cash-strapped state, you're always trying to look for small investments, big impact. Um, we know that students who take the SAT are much more likely to you know, just think about college as an option, uh, which is a good thing. And that's why also we wanted to do it during class time. I want to ask you one more question, then I want to throw it open to people here. Um, as we talk more and more about completion rates, about getting kids to college, um, and, and, and turn it into this almost thing to get to the finish line of, 
is there any danger that the pressure to do that, in the pressure to do that, um, that we will take our eye off quality and that we'll turn college into a much different kind of experience that maybe actually isn't all it's supposed to be? So my hope is that we would actually go the other way, which is to say, um, if we focus even more on the fact that you need skills and education to get a good job, we will double down on our efforts to make college um, more relevant. So at our, and, and we're, we're trying hard to do that in Rhode Island. We have new president of our community college and Rhode Island College, and that's what we're doing. We're making it easier to get the class, you know, make it easier to schedule so you can get the classes you need when you need them, easier to go to school in the summer, easier to do online classes, and really making sure we're teaching classes that are relevant for jobs that are available now. And again, if this whole Promise program is about equipping folks with skills to get good jobs, I'm hoping that puts into the system a mentality of, we gotta get, we gotta get people to graduate. Half a college degree is not valuable. This is about completing with a degree, with relevant skills to get a good job. Um, I also think there's huge benefits to the K through 12 system, because if every kid knows there's a spot for them in college, regardless of whether they're rich or poor, I think they're gonna work harder and be more motivated and more goal-oriented. A lot of kids give up because they figure, why, why bother? I can't go, I can't afford it. But if they know there's a spot for them if they hustle in high school, I think it will help performance in K through 12. So while we've been talking, people have been submitting, emailing questions, and um, Adam, you're gonna ask some of those, right? Sure, um, first one from anonymous person in the audience, will you please run for president? <laughs> oh, that's very kind. I, I, got, I have a lot of wood to chop in Rhode Island. Okay. <laughs> um, this question from Michael Petullo at Columbia Law School. Are college affordability programs like these just sub substituting for declining state appropriations mm. to public institutions of higher ed, which has been a trend for decades? So it's an unfortunate trend and one that I have uh, started to turn the tide on in Rhode Island since becoming governor. Mm -hmm. Each year I've put in budgets that provide you know, more funding for higher ed and I hope to be able to continue to do that because it's an investment worth making and I think we ignore that to our peril. It's a shame to see, for instance, what's happened at UC California system. Uh, so no, but this, this is a way to continue to support our institutions of public higher ed, um, and also, as I say, breaks down barriers for, for, for young people who deserve a chance. Okay, this question from Douglas Harrison at uh, University of Maryland. Um, given the large number of adult learners whose pathway through higher ed typically does not include a full-time college experience, why limit free college to full-time students? Yes, that is a terrific question. The answer is you have to start somewhere, but I, we need to do a lot more to help adult learners, and I uh, will continue to work on that. You know, that it's a, there are so many people in Rhode Island who are adult, mid-career, some of the people I just talked about, you know, stuck in jobs, they, they don't make much money, they're working hard, and the only way they're gonna unlock their earning potential is to go back to school and we need to do more for that, and you know we're gonna continue to do that. Okay, a few more questions I wanna get through. Um, would you prefer to see the federal government offer free education, or is this a job for the states? I would love to see the federal government do its <laughs> job, <laughs> but in the absence of them doing their job, I'm gonna do mine. <laughs> you know, it's absolutely, the United States government, it is so upsetting to see the lack of funding and to see funding cut. And I hope that that changes. But again, in the meantime, we have thousands of Rhode Islanders who are looking to us for action and we are doing what we need to do. Okay. Is Rhode Island considering funding apprenticeship programs? This is a priority of many business leaders. Yes. We, I should have um, said this earlier. We have done an awful lot uh, as it relates to expanding apprenticeship programs, 
expanding our career and technical education programs in our high schools. You know, not everyone should go to college. And that when I talk to students in high school, I say to them, promise me you will do, get, do something past high school. You want to go into the military? Great. You want to do an apprenticeship program? Great. You want to go to college, two year or four year? Great. But you got to promise me you're going to go get some degree or credential past high school because I know that's what you need to get a job and realize your potential. So we have, by no means is this a uh, substitute for investments in apprenticeships, job training programs, career and technical education. The reality is it's, it's, a, it's a brutal place to be in the American economy if you don't have a, some degree or credential past high school. And so I want to make as many options as possible available to people so everybody has a shot. Mm -hmm. And you know, we, since I've been governor, we've been really lucky to create a lot of jobs. Um, we've created, you know, this won't sound like much to you, but you know, 12, 13,000 jobs, it's a lot. Our unemployment rate has dropped dramatically. I have to make sure Rhode Islanders are getting these jobs. You know, I've announced 17 new companies coming to Rhode Island. I need the people of Rhode Island getting these good jobs we're creating. Mm -hmm. And that's what this is all about. Okay. Another question. If you were to argue against your own program, to criticize your own program. Why would I do that? <laughs> <laughs> I need to get this passed in the legislature. <laughs> right. If you were to create a stunt double who did that, uh, what, w what would be the most valid criticisms that you've had to work through, fend off, et cetera? Uh, <laughs> you know, first, let me say, as I said the other day, I, I want the legislature to pass this. This is about jobs. A vote for it is a vote for jobs. Having said that, I'm open to compromise. So I don't think it should be means tested for all the reasons I said. But if we have to go that way in light of budget realities, I'm open to that. I'm open to the budgetary realities that there are. Um, quite frankly, I think the criticism is it should be more. It should be what you just said. It should be adult ed. It should be people who are mid-career. What are we doing about adult ed? How come it's only two years and not four years? Um, how come it's not for students who are in college right now and just starting with the soon to be in college? And you know, we've, we've tried to say you've got to start somewhere and live within our means and just get the program off the ground. Okay, great. That's wonderful. Frank, any last comments, questions from you? No, I'm just uh, so thankful you spent the time huh. with us. Thank you. I'm sorry it wasn't over Italian food, as I Next said before, time. but I think there are <laughs> drinks um, <laughs> awaiting anybody who's thirsty. So, so Frank called me a, couple, a year or so ago and he said, Gene, I want to come to Rhode Island and you pick a restaurant. The stress of having the former New York Times food critic, who's Italian, having you pick the restaurant. But we did OK, right? It was and fun. I will always remember something you said to me. I think, that we, I think we did this twice. Yeah. So you've had to pick twice. Um, you were talking about your career in rugby in school. Right, right. But I think you were also talking about your career in politics. And you said, at 5'3", it's good to be little and fast. Right. So, <laughs> so thank you, little, fast thank governor you, of Rhode Island, you. for your time with us. Thank you. Please.